greatest potential for harm that climate change will pose is to make already bad situations worse. So where there are risks of disasters, climate change will either increase the, the risk of that hazard, increase the intensity or frequency of, of the disaster risk, or make it harder for, um, for communities and states to be able to deal with the existing disaster risks. So it's understanding the way in which climate change can exacerbate these existing risks that we need to concentrate on rather than looking at um, climate change hazards as separate to um, existing disaster risks. So in order to be able to deal with these risks, it does require a, an integrated approach which, which means we need to think about the, the way, the knock-on consequences, the ways in which um, climate change will not just directly affect existing processes like disaster risk reduction, but also um, the knock-on consequences, the social, economic and political. And similarly, understanding the ways in which climate policies, specifically around adaptation or mitigation, will impact these existing hazards. So we need to understand um, not just the direct implications of climate change on a particular process, but also the indirect consequences of the consequences of those. So really, responses to climate change in order to be conflict sensitive need to understand the, the way in which risk is experienced and the root causes of that risk. Um, at the community level and similarly um, for conflict responses to be climate sensitive exactly the same um, reasoning applies and another important dimension here is that it's not just understanding um, the reality of risks at the community level but also understanding why state level national or, or district level state responses aren't responding to those so just responding to the community level um, risks won't um, address the problem in the long run. You also need to um, address the, the, the reasons that governance responses are failing or um, what obstacles there are to, to more effective governance responses. So you need to address both the local and then also the, the, the national level obstacles there. It's always been a challenge to, to divert resources and energy to prevention rather than response. This has been the case in, in, in peace building because you can't measure um, prevention, you can't show effectively to your donor that your action or the, the action that they funded has prevented something from happening. Um, so, and the similar challenges faced in disaster risk reduction um, and that means that a lot more um, money is targeted to response. So there, there's, um, I guess, a, a, a space for the research community to, to, show, to produce the evidence base to show that this is um, um, cost effective and, and an effect, a, a meaningful way to, to spend resources. And I would warn against the creation of new funding streams. And there you're seeing already in the first few years of, of climate change aid being dispersed, you're seeing um, uh, contradictory policies, you're seeing um, a lack of harmonisation between national adaptation programmes of action and national development plans, um, and you're seeing com competition um, over these resources which, which arguably are, are hindering um, uh, effective um, responses to, to these underlying issues of, of poverty and, um, um, and delivery of effective services on the ground. Mm -hmm.